on the East Coast at yeah. SCG Live, hashtag SCGNJ. Uh, we love to chat with you. You can also tweet at Gerard and I's uh, personal Twitter accounts because, yeah. I mean, we uh, we check them. Yeah, we do. We yeah. check them all the time. So we're going to start here with Turtonball versus Swatkins. All right, awesome. Turtonball versus Swat uh, Swatkins. All right. That's a fun last yeah. name. I like that last name. All right, so Owen Turtonball is on the right with those sleeves. <laughs> And we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Gerard, you can say it. You can, can say it. I wasn't sure. You can say the guys in there. People can read, Gerard. No, they can't. Yeah. <laughs> the channel fireball sleeves. <laughs> That's what they are. No, oh no, I just got fired apparently. All right. <laughs> all right. So Owen's gonna bust out a uh, new prop guild mage. Is right. what's gonna start this game. Guild mage is uh, pretty impressive, especially with that. Stealer of Secrets in his hand. Yeah. That's it. That's a pretty nice combo. Oh, although there's the Pegasus yeah, to Con stop it. Concordia Pegasus, one through Flyer. We'll see if uh, Turtonwald's going to get in here. Also, we're going to see if he has a third land, because as you said, he does have Stealer of Secrets. Yeah, he does and not And he does have just pass the turn back. Okay. Yeah. So Swatkins, with his one three, maybe he starts the turn off by attacking. He certainly has another land to go along with that Temple Garden in a forest. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. Lots of times you keep the two landers limited on the play, mm -hmm. and every so often you're going to break off. Yeah. But I, it's it's right to keep, especially with the Guild Mage, especially with Stealer Secrets. Yeah, having a plant, having an island. His hand yeah. is certainly good. Yeah, of course. You know, he just needs to draw some lands here. It doesn't want to you know, get screwed forever, but certainly does want to uh, be able to play the game. And he certainly, had, he certainly has some good cards in his hand as well. So you're going to see the Concordia Pegasus come on across. Turtonwald can give his guy flying right now just to block. Maybe Swatkins is trying to induce here. I think if I was Owen, I would do that. Yeah, I would want him to maybe waste his turn. All right. All right. Well, Centaur Herald will just pass the turn back. So no trick there. No burst of strength. No There's giant the planes. Throw. There is the planes there. Very also, what draw. this allows, too, is that lost Turton Wall to attack. So Swatkin tries to get a point of damage through. Turton Wall calls his bluff, blocks. And now Turton Wall, as a result, gets two points of damage across. So this might seem minor right now. But Swatkin just doesn't attack. Yeah. And he's still at 20. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I don't know why he would attack there. You know? All right. Now there's a wind, wind drake. drake. Hmm, no stealer secrets. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I think stealer is probably you know a little bit worse right now. It seems like the thing I don't like about stealer secrets is you see a centaur herald on the ground looming to make a, a centaur, and the concordia pegasus in the air with three toughness. It just seems very difficult to get through. Sure, j just a threat of stealer secrets though. Sometimes allows your opponent to to play in a way because they're so afraid of you drawing a card. Sure. Or you never know. Maybe Owen will draw a creature enchantment if he has something, or you never really know. Yeah. yeah. Well, Turtonwald is going to tap two mana here. He's going to play a Syndic of Ties. Now, this is a card that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, obviously, this is one of the better cards and commons in, across the entire format. Oh, yes, definitely. But you saw this in Ors of, you saw it in Boros in Gatecrash Limited. See Swatkins making a Centaur there off of the Centaur's Herald. But now it gives Azorius that something they did not have before, which is Reach. You know, they had the Splash before for maybe like a Teleportal type effect. Well, no longer they do that, as Syndic of Ties both fits their curve and does allow them to get a little Reach in their deck to the next one. Yeah, it's definitely a really good point. Okay. All right, so there's land number five for Squatkins. Ah. Uh, Golgari Longlegs. Ooh. So that's a 5-4 that's bigger than basically everything on the board right now. A pretty juicy detained target for that new Frog Guild Mage. If Turtonwall is able to get himself up to five lands, he's hit his fourth land drop here. So two islands and two planes. We'll see if he's a four mana spell to play. Maybe it's time for Sealer Secrets plus an Extort. Yeah, plus I wouldn't mind do, uh, that play right there. Just, you know, build build your board. As long as you have the uh, Syndicate of the Tides, you're not really worried about taking a lot of damage because you're getting life back. Instead, I think Owen might go for something with like an Eyes in the Skies I yeah. see in his hand. He does have Eyes in the Skies in his hand. He also has a Soul Sworn Jury in his hand. That's the 2-1, uh, um, what some people call the Tickle Monster with its long arms. That's out there to detain something and then it's unblockable. Sure. So the whole team's coming in. So Let's this see. is the this is the power of green white, right? This is what we saw in Return to Ravnica. Yeah. You attack with your with your creatures here, your Golgari long legs, your centaur token, your Pegasus. You say, all right, man, best of luck blocking Turtonwald. Is there are a million tricks I can have, and that is only magnified by the fact that Blood Rush exists now too. All right. So he's ordering the blockers. Yep. So mm. first, second. I think I might have wanted to kill that Syndicate of Tides. Mm. What do you think? I mean, Neutron Guild Mage is, it, it seems like the more dangerous card because it sure. has all sorts of text, it has two abilities, and stuff like that. And But at the end of the day, it might be the Syndicatize that's the more dangerous of them, as now Turtonwald's going to play an Eyes in the Skies after Swatkins drops a Force turn. Yeah, he plays the Force at the Armored Wolf Rider. Yep, there it is. So just a, a couple of monsters on the uh, on Swatkins' side of the table. 
So let's, let's go put those two pangos into play. Those will be your bird tokens. We'll see, we'll see if we can get some real ones out there for you guys, just so we can represent those correctly. But Owen does draw another land. Now he has an island, so fifth land drop is here. We're gonna put that into play, and now, Gerard, he can start doing things like playing his four drops and detaining with them. Yeah, see, the or, whole excuse me, and, uh, and extorting with them. Go yeah, on. exactly. The, the, the whole thing here is that if you would have played the Steeler of Secrets instead of the Windrick that one turn, the Steeler of Secrets wouldn't play, would be in play over that Windrick, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and now he's able to play the 2 1, detain Swatkin's only blocker, and he's able to draw an extra card, right? Sure. So I, I'm still curious about why Windrake over the Steeler of Secrets. It's a good question. Hopefully, one will be able to ask him. Yeah. Especially if he does win this match. Yeah. So, so Turn Wall's going to come across in the air for four. Going to put Swatkin's down to 14. Turn Wall's going to follow up here. There's the Tickle Monster. And no. Ooh. No extort. Okay, wow. so so Turnwald now is going to be bluffing the smite. That's yep. why he did not, not um, attack with the Syndicate Tides, it looks like. Or maybe he just wants to go for a double block? Yeah. I mean, he's, I, certainly, he's certainly bluffing a smite here. Yeah, yeah, I think he's bluffing a smite, and he's hedging for just a double block. I think that's his line right there. He doesn't have smite, though, right? Um, take a look to see if it's in his deck list or not. Yeah, I'm I don't pretty, know if he has it in his hand I'm right now. I'm pretty sure he does not not even have smite in his deck. Let's take a look right now, we'll find out. And he does, oh, does he? Oh, he does have this one. Okay, so I just thought it was a bluff. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it kind of felt like a bluff, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, would, would you bluff Smite in, in, instead of trying to get the uh, the trigger? I guess that's the question there. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a strong play by Owen. Yeah. I just really thought it was a bluff. Now, do you think Owen would bluff that? I think I think it's in his range, no? See, I, 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 I don't know. You know, I think the extort trigger is so important, gaining one and draining one, that is it really worth losing that potential life to bluff a smite for one turn? I, I don't feel like it would be. Okay. Definitely, uh, definitely the game has has kind of progressed into Owen's favor. Owen Turtlewall now has an army of guys. He, he drew the lands that he needed to draw, yep. and he's able to play his type of game that he wants to play. Yeah. You know, Swatkins does follow up here with a six mana spell there. He does have one of those uh, one of those maze creatures there in the maze behemoth. Yes. Yeah, so that joins the fray, giving all those multicolored creatures trample. Yeah, it would have been nice for that Golgari Longlegs to still be around yeah. because that is a hybrid creature with a multicolored creature. Yep. But unfortunately, it uh, died to a smite. Oh. Now, Owen wants to draw into some of his bombs. And he has many of them. Yeah, he has many bombs. He has an Aetherling in his deck. He has a little uh, Lavenia of the Tenth. He also Archon has, of Justice. Yeah, he has the uh, yeah the big double detained Archon, yes. the Archon of uh, Trimulid. Yeah, so yes. And uh, he, he's also got one more looming in his deck as well. But I mean, Aetherling just could close out the game so so quickly. Oh, that's what Aetherling does, my yeah. friend. One of the best cards in limited, and I think it's making its way into standard. As you can see, a nice shot there of Reed Duke, William Jensen, and uh, an Owen Turnwall. Kind of kind of interesting here. Turnwall has many many lines of play. And he decides to go with a Knightly Valor on the Windrake. All right. So now I think he's going to get in for six points of damage. And Swatkins is probably just going to take this. Yeah, he has no good blocks here. And uh, I think Swatkins is going to try to just attack back. Maybe he's he draws a, a pump spell of some of some sort. But right now it looks like Owen Turnwall is uh, is a huge favorite this game. Yeah, I mean he's certainly ahead right now. You know he's being able to push through some damage in the air with that two, with that four four windrake. Excuse me, that does have vigilance, so it's certainly ready to block as well. But don't forget about that soul sworn spirit that is going to be compete pushing through damage because it is unblockable. But here come the armored wolf rider. Here comes the maze behemoth. Turtonwald at the ready for a double block. You see him moving his creatures. They they were already kind of set up for this yeah. double block. It looks like he was predicting that this attack was going to take place, which proves to me, Gerard, that maybe A, he doesn't have another spell in his hand, but B, he's not overvaluing that Syndicate Tides. Yeah, I mean, Owen does have spells. We saw him stumble on mana early in the game. Yeah. But, hey, maybe those spells are expensive spells. Yeah. I think I might have saw Tristani's Judgment, which if he draws a six land, he's going to immediately cast it and not going to wait for a seven to, to extort anyway. Yeah. So trading there definitely seems fine. So now you see Swatkins after damage does resolve. The dust is cleared. Second main phase is going to play a Sunspire Griffin, play a land, pass the turn back. You see in his hand he does have an Avenging Arrow, so Turtonwald is going to come in here. Again with the same attack, 4-4 Windrake that does have Vigilance through that Knightly Valor. Soulsworn Spirit going to be unblockable. Concord Pegasus is going to get in front here. Damage is going to resolve. Swatkins move down to 6. This is going to be 
Oh, oh wow. with an Angoraphobia. He's going to use all of his mana this and turn. And steal our secrets. So it was not a uh, Tristani Judgment yep. in uh, Turner Wall's hand. So now there's Avenging Arrow. It's going to take care of the Knight of Valor and the Wind Drake. So Watkins is going to untap. He's going to draw. See if he can catch back up here as it is 6-9 to nine in this game. He's going to play a Golgari Gilgate, Gilgate and pass the turn back. All right, so he has no good attacks here. He's just probably going to have to pass the turn and uh, kind of hope for the best. Yeah. And the one creature that matters the most here for Turtonwald is that unblockable 2-1 in Soulsworn Spirit. Is that an inspiration that, in his hand? That does look like it is an inspiration that was drawn for the turn. Turtonwald, take a look at his deck list. He does have one of those. Maybe he wants to start his turn off with inspiration. Maybe he just wants to get the attack step over with first. But inspiration will give him a little bit of information. Yeah. Let him know what he can be working with here as he draws one. He draws two. Prosper and Weird, one of those two cards that he does draw. And a Pegasus, Yeah, it looks like. So he's able to go Island Pegasus if that's exactly what he did draw. I think he wants to swing in only with a 2-1. And yeah. he does just that. Comes to the same conclusion. Going to put Swatkins down to four. Turtonwald going to tap that Plains, play that Island, play that Concordia Pegasus, pass the turn back. Okay. Now I think next turn he's able to swing with everything. Oh, wow. Right, so second gate takes care of the Soul and Swarm Spirit. So immediately you saw Swatkins take that gate, put it into play right off of the top. Minus two, minus two over there to Soul Swarm Spirit and pass the turn back. So now the game changes drastically. Yeah, Swatkins, really. Swatkins is at four. Yeah. But again, Turtonwald now with no great oh, attacks. wow. Is that a dramatic rescue? Ooh, that does look like Is that a dramatic rescue? Yeah, it is. For the turn. Wow, that's such a great draw. All Owen uh, Turtonwald has to do right now is dramatic rescue the Griffin. Attack Swatkins down to one life with his flyers. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that was a dramatic rescue. So does he want to use it that aggressively or does he want to play it a little bit more defensively? Again, I don't I, I think that he does want to take the aggressive approach with the card. Maybe he's asking his teammates here, uh, you know, William Jensen, Reed Duke, maybe they're asking for help. Maybe maybe Owen's confirming that's that that's what he wants to do, as you see. Huey kind of looking on here. You also see that Jensen is up a game now against Gagnon in the middle. Di Donato is up a game against Reed Duke. We cut back to the Turtonwald match. He does dramatic rescue. He's going to come across for three. Puts Watkins down to one. Follow-up play is Frostborn Word. Pass the turn back. He's empty-handed. Swatkins is going to need a good one. Yep, definitely. Now, I think that maybe Turtonwald should have held a Frostborn Weird just because he has three different flyers. Okay. So even if Squawkins were to draw another flyer, he would still lose. Sure. And maybe, you know, even though these guys played already, maybe Squawkins has something like a Mercy's Eviction in his deck where Turnerwald would still be able to have a follow-up creature. Understood. Yeah. All right, but no, and Turnerwald is also up a game. So it looked like William Jensen was going to have a rough time, but he did win game one. All in Turnerwald, one game one. But for, uh, for the team, Reed Duke. Lost, lost game one. So I think we're gonna. Uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna cut back here and give away premium or not yet. We're, sure. we're gonna find out here. As you know, we do see the wide shot. We see Reed Duke kind of battling here, back against the wall, down a game here against Di Donato. Looks like a damage race. All, all the creatures are turned sideways, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're gonna cut over to Jensen and Gagnon. So I think we'll we'll take the opportunity to give that premium giveaway after this match. Oh yeah, sure, in between yeah. that and the booster draft for yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea there. All right, so Donato untaps and draws. I see it. Is it a dispel in Donato's hand? I see a Mystic Genesis over there for sure. Mystic Genesis, and I think a dispel as well. Yeah. yeah so. Looks like he's a blue green deck here. Reed's going to do some blocking. You can see from a distance. You see Jensen also talking a little strategy there to Turtonwall, trying to figure out what's going on. As you see, Di Donato really needs to take down this match. And we see a handshake here from Reed Duke, so it looks like Di Donato does win the match. Reed Duke does extend the hand, so Dionato does win the match. He is up 2-0. to zero. So Jensen, Turtonwald, I think it's on these two. Yep, back against the wall, but yep. both of both of them are up again. Yep. So, you know, where would you want to be right now? Would you rather be up a match and down two games, or down a match and up two games? Boy, it's tough, right? It is, I mean, right? you see you see Reed slide over here, and that's that's the thing. If you're a if you're Swatkins and Gagnon right now, okay, look at the three-headed monster that's just been assembled sure, here. Yeah. You know, this is a little bit difficult. Yes, Reed got smashed, but he can uh he can apply his services elsewhere here. Not not to say that Turtonwater Jensen needs them, but it's a certainly uh pretty scary. Yes, you definitely. Know? And it looks like a Gagnon is mulliganing to six. Yep. So now where would you rather be? I wouldn't mind being down a match if I'm up a game, up a game, and 
in one of the matches, my opponent is mulliganing me down to six. You know, it's kind of funny, right? Like, on both sides of it, you feel pretty good. Like, if you're Reed right now, you're like, all right, I did lose, but my teammates are both off the game. And, I mean, my teammates are own Turnbull and William Jensen. Yes. On the flip side, if you're Donato, it's like, all right, well, we're up a match. Yes, we're down a game in each one, but, I mean, that's magic. You're going to lose a game. That's why they play best sure. out of three. All we got to do is win one of these two. Yeah. So, as you see in Gagnon's hand, Wojak Habadir is also an Aurelia. Yeah. Only two lands, so that Aurelia might not come down for a while. Yeah, but when it comes down, look out, ladies. Yeah. So all Gakadon wants to do is pretty much draw lands. I think that's a Martial Glory. That's correct. He does draw Martial Glory for the turn. We'll see what two drop he wants to play. It looks like he has a bit of a decision. Yeah, I believe he has like, two two drops. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, you know running them over with his teammates. Wow. How do I want to start this game off? Wojak Halbadir or my other option? He's going to go with the Halbadir and just okay. pass the turn back. Yeah, Wojak Halbadir always good on turn two. Yeah. You know, three power just really gets in there. So can't really complain with a, a Mulligan the six when you start off with a draw like that. Jensen going to play a Plains here. He's going to follow that up with a Tithe Drinker. All right, so, Extort and Lifelink. Yep. So the 2 1 comes into play. Probably at the ready here to trade with that Wojcik Calvary. He's giving the opportunity as that's a fantastic trade. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Gag Gagnon will uh, most likely save his guy with the Martial Glory. Yep. So uh, we'll see what happens. There you see on the screen the Tithe Drinker. Just uh, pretty much uh, strictly better than Syndicate of Tithes for the most part. Yeah. You know? Especially if you're going to play Orzov anyway. Yeah, I mean, definitely. They line up very similarly. Two toughness on the Syndicate of, the Syndicate of Ties might make it a, a little bit better, but at the end of the day, I, I would believe that Tides Drinker is probably better. Yeah, with as, the lifelink. Yeah, yeah, as Jensen is going to play a, a Demir Gilgit, he's going to pass the turn back. Both his creatures are going to come to the red zone because that Riot Biker does have to do that. That is the rules of the card. All right, and there is going to be a Martial Glory. So he'll get in for extra damage and save his Wojak Habadir. So in for five, Jensen will gain get, Jensen will gain two, so it'll be a total of three. Sure. Yeah, that's going to be dealt this turn. Gagnon does have a Plains to pass the turn back, so he does find his third land drop, so he's doing okay. You know there's a small mana stumble there at the beginning. Jensen untaps, he's going to play, I can only imagine, yeah, he's going to play that Black Gatekeeper. He's got so many of those. Yes, so many of those. All right, so let's see what Gagnon draws. Ooh, can't make it out. I, bl look. I believe he has an act of treason in his hand, along with the Aurelia. The card that he doesn't have in his hand, however, Gerard, is a fourth land. You know, you also take a look at his hand right now, and you see the three one that does get double strike yes. from uh, from Gate Crash, the Old Run veteran. Okay. So. Yeah. So maybe if he draws like a, a fourth land, yeah. he'll, he'll play that. A lot of people don't give that card uh, a lot of respect. Personally, I don't like it either. Yeah. But uh, I see some people playing with it. Kind of more of a fringe type card. Yeah, I mean, there are moments where it's good, but I think the uh, the bad oftentimes comes up more than the good yeah. does, especially because of one toughness. You do have to send the battalion, and there are just better battalion creatures. As you do see Gagnon, he does have to throw away the Riot Piker, but he does get in four points of damage here with the Viachino First Blade. So... That, uh, that Ubsal, U Ubsar Gatekeepers, excuse me, doing a number right now on Gagnon. Yeah, I mean, do you think Gagnon should be even trying to, to attack or trying to deal any any damage because of the Aurelia? I mean, you know, the Riot Pikers is going to die anyway, so he yeah. might as well get some damage across because it does have to attack every sure. turn. So he's able to get in four points of damage that way. And then, you know, then you can kind of work your way into maybe a board stall, um, clog up the board. It's not like Jensen's deck kills quickly anyway. I know, yeah, that's yeah. exactly the reason. And then and then Aurelia can take over. But I think, like, his opening turns for this game, I think they're perfectly reasonable. Okay, that's fair. Now Ooh, Jensen's wow. going to play Unflinching oh, Courage. Wow. That's going to turn some things around here because yeah. now the Gatekeeper is going to be a 4-6. 4-6 lifelink. Yeah. Game. Very, very impressive. Very tough for a Boros deck to, 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 to handle. Yeah, the one thing a Boros deck would prefer not to play against is something that some something or someone that can gain a lot of life. And also, keep in mind as well, Gerard, that, that thing is a 4-6. Is a it That's is. huge. Yeah, pretty much the only thing that really answers it is something like an Angelic Edict. Yeah, Smite does a decent job. But again, you know, you, you have to take a look at Gagnon's deck list to see if it, it does doesn't have look a like smite a, a Smite type of deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a Boros deck, yeah. typically not a Smite type of deck. Yeah, so Gagnon tries to get back for uh, four damage there, but he, he's definitely losing this race the way it is right now. Yeah, Civic Saber here to suit up, make that Viachino a little bit bigger, but you know he's just trading points of damage here, but this favors Jensen in a big way. Yes, for sure. Let's see if Jensen has any uh, follow-up play here. He does have pretty much most of his colors. He has three black sources, two green sources, a blue source, and two white sources. Mm -hmm. So, 
you see Jensen Kenny consulting his teammates right now as well, saying, what do you think I should do this turn? You know, Reed's by his side, asking, uh, you know, helping. All right, so this is the gatekeeper wow. that's going to gain seven. And this is the reason that we brought up that he has the eight guild gates in his deck to go along with his gatekeepers. Yeah. is because these these gatekeepers are all very good cards to be able to activate oh, definitely. the ability. Yeah, and I'm really surprised that Reed thought William Jensen's match it would be really tough. Just because it looks like he has all the cards he wants against the Boros deck. Yeah, you're going to see Act of Treason here take that gatekeeper. Gagnon's going to push in some damage here. He's going to gain some life back, which is a momentary reprieve from what's going on here. You know, he kind of wants to extend the game again so that he can try to take over with Aurelia, but I don't know if he's ever going to make it yeah, to that I point mean, here. He's missing too many lands right now. Yeah. Yeah. The mulligan, that's, that's the one thing with the Boros deck. Mulliganing really hurts it. Yep. You know, because you, you need to have the perfect cards in the right order. Yep. You, know, you want to come out quick with a two drop, with a three drop, with a four drop. You want to have a combat trick or a removal spell. But if you're drawing your two drop on turn seven or eight, that's not going to be that good for you. Yeah, not at all. So Gagnon's going to draw a card here. He draws a skin brand goblin. That's the two one for two that can blood that can blood rush for one red to give a creature an attacking creature. Excuse me, plus two plus one. But again, how much does that help right now? Not very much. Yeah, Gagnon's down to ten life here. You see Jensen being aggressive with those gatekeepers. You know, he could have kept back that 2-4, uh, the green one, and he sure. decided, no, absolutely not. I'm in the driver's seat here. I'm at 20. I'm the aggressive deck right now. I can cash in this cluestone to draw a card and keep the pressure up on you depending on what I draw. And Boros, let me tell you, does not play defense or catch up very well. Definitely. And, you know, you, every time you have something like an armadillo cloak, with the unflinching courage, anytime you have a life licker, you want a damage race. Yeah. And William Jetson is doing just that. He's going to sack that clue stone. And this is very telling, right? No more attacks on the Shino with the Civic Saber. Yeah. It's on defense. You know, that's... I, I don't want to say, say that Gagnon is waving the white flag, but that's only what that symbolizes. When Boros slows down or stops, and you see Jensen with his five-color, eight Gilded deck pressing into Spanish, you've got to be feeling pretty dosh darn good if you're Jensen right now. Definitely. All right, so there's a trade. Gagnon will go down to six life. Yeah, Jensen up to 24. Yeah. What's the follow-up here, Cedric? What's up with what looks like the... I believe that's the white gatekeeper yeah, there? making a 2-2 knight. Yeah? Yeah, he gets to make a 2-2 uh, oh, repeat awesome. token. Wow. Man, these gatekeepers are good. Very powerful. Yeah. And that's an extension of the hand, so Jensen's going to win the match 2-0, and now it's all on Turtonwall. All right, so we're going to switch over to Owen Turtonwall versus Swatkins. Yeah, versus Brian Swatkins. See what kind of game state we're going to walk into there, get our life totals updated. And you do see Jensen and Duke looking on now. Jensen saying, I've done my job. Reed trying to help the best that he can. You see Donato saying, all right, Brian, I got my win. Now we just have to beat former player of the year. Could the three of us beat the three of them? Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe. Yeah. We'll, uh, hey. we'll, we'll find out in a moment. If these three got, want to make it to the finals, <laughs> you can't say they didn't earn it because they would have beaten Turtonwall, Jensen, and Duke twice in the tournament to make it to the finals. Yeah, pretty insane. All right, so they're discussing some plays, as you can see. Yep. We have a nice overhead view of the uh, of the players. All right, so Owen looks over to William. What to do, what to do. All right, there we, we go. Cut in, we cut into quite the game state here. Yeah, it's still we, pretty early in the game. Yeah, we see Turtonwald here with New Prop Guild Mage and the uh, the Hobzob 1-4. And when it attacks, you can pay a white and tap a creature. Lotless Troll, Centaur Healer, and Concordi Pegasus on Swatkin's side. Swatkin's side kind of looks like when looking at the board, it could be playing like a junk reanimator deck from Standard, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, without that Pegasus, card, yeah, his card pool is pretty high. Yeah, Let's see, lot the troll, limited all star. Yeah, very, very powerful creature. All right, Owen's gonna uh, attack for two here, and Swatkin's going to block. Then Owen's gonna play Syndicate, Syndicate of Tides. Tides. Path the turn back, so no land. Yeah, I feel like Owen's been short on mana in many of the games I've watched him. Yeah, it's really felt that way. Yeah, and I, and I believe he's playing 17 lands. That's something, uh, you know, Owen and Reed, not, unlikely for Owen to be playing anything less. Yeah, pretty yeah. pretty traditional. And you know, the one thing you're not going to find either, Gerard, is you're not going to find any guild gates in this deck. You look at this mana base right now of nine islands and eight mountains, or excuse me, nine islands and eight planes. The reason you're not going to find any guild gates is because Jensen has them all. Okay, you yeah, know, they, yeah, they yeah they that's true. In this deck. I can't imagine they had an extra one lying around. Yeah. So now we're going to see, I believe that is alive and well. Yes. So if you want to gain eight life, put a 3-3 three, three token into play. 
kind of reminds me of uh, Call the Herd. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you know, Call the Herd, a flashback. This has a fuse. Yeah, I mean, eight life's not, certainly nothing to ignore right now, too. So it puts the 3 3 Centaur into play. Turtonwald's going to do some blocking here, it looks like. Yeah, he'll just double block. Yep. Take the opportunity to kill that, that Centaur healer. All right. And Turtonwald will untap. He really needs a land here. Look at him place the card out, just like the bonfire. Yep. But no land. So we do have an update here in our other match here. If you wanted to see, you know, the ultimate final. Sure. Nezen, Scare, and Demestrio do win their match. So those two players, those three players, excuse me, will be going to the finals playing the winner of this match as it does come down to Turdwald and Swatkins. Let's see what happens. Let's see what Swatkins wants to do this turn here. What, what do you think a good line of play is here? Does, does he have any solid attacks? I mean, no attacks that I'm really in love with, right? I mean, Lotleth Troll, you know, as powerful as that card is, you know, it, it constructed and limited. While it's certainly very, very good, it's kind of risky oh, to, definitely. you know, throw a bunch of cards away on it. Especially when you know that certain one has a dramatic rescue that won him the first game. It's horribly risky. It also has a creature that does say detain on it right on the board. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's difficult to want to move in on that card. Uh, the Centaur doesn't have any great attacks here. As you see the players, Swatkins, Gagnon, and Dinato trying to figure out what they want to do this turn. You know, do I want to bluff a trick? You know, what what is my best play this turn? You see, you see, they're definitely working it through. Yeah, I mean, turn wall just has a one four, like you said. Yeah. You know, so it, it's tough to to have any profitable attacks unless Swatkins is willing to commit a trick yeah. or removal spell of some sort. So, and so we'll, see this this right here. That's the information game. Okay. Because you're going to see the gatekeeper come down. He's going to get a white knight there. Or, uh, yeah, a new knight, a 2 2. Sure. That does have vigilance. But that's the information game. If you saw Swatkins and Dinato talking back and forth, how much information there are they giving up the turn while Jensen and Duke? You don't know. I mean, maybe Reed Duke's job is just to find the information that the, the opponents are given. Yeah. And then he'll uh, relay that to William Jensen, and William Jensen will tell Turtonwall what to do. Yeah. Because, you know, so, as you're going to see a cloud from Raptor here from Turtonwall and just pass the turn back, you know, it, it seemed like there was a bit of an argument there between Swatkins yeah. and I don't know what yeah. to do for the turn. You know, play this, play that, play this. It's like, all right, well, now you're just letting me know that you have two plays. Exactly. So that's step one. And anything that you can infer from the conversation that the opponents are having, you have to take. Of course. And, and try to use it to the best of your ability. Yeah, and, and so far we haven't seen Turner Wall, William Jensen, or Duke, you know, argue at all. Just kind of kind of be very smooth here. So, oh, wow. Look at look at this, Cedric. Swatkins. So we saw this last game, too. Yeah. Well, Swatkins is not afraid to turn all of his guys sideways. Would Turner Wall only have... Having two white mana up yeah. and saying, hey, you got a block now. Do you think that, that that's maybe a reason why he did it this turn? Because he doesn't have to fear something like an Azorius Charm or a Dramatic Rescue, which you saw last game? Yeah. Yeah. Could definitely. Be. So, right now, what are the tricks? Aerial Maneuver. Yeah. Smite. Yeah. Anything else? Not to come to my top of the head? Yeah, yeah. not to top. Maybe Swift Justice is one. Sure. You know, Turtonwald, ready to resolve damage. You can see the Centaur take down a new prop guild mage. Okay. You know, a little bit of damage comes through here. We'll see if Swatkins has a play, but he oh, just wow. has a North no Guild Gate. Play? Yeah. Mm, kind of interesting. Turtonwald still without a fourth land. Draws a nightly battle for the turn. You see him separate his hand. He's got the eyes in the sky. He's got the old one of Cloud from Raptors not doing very much right now. And he's just dying to hit a fourth land here. It doesn't look like he has much of a trick right now, Gerard. Yeah, I mean, Turtonwald's on seven life here. And his defense is not that strong. He's an 0-1, a 1-3, and a 1-4. Blocks here don't look great either. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, these blocks are. All right, Swatkin says, I declare my attack step, and here I go. Everybody's coming in. Let's see what, what Owen can do. He's double blocking and, and maybe jumping? Is it time? Is it I time for a chump block? Because, you know, Turtonwald is trying to get, you know, by, by double blocking here, he's eking out small advantages. Yes, exactly. And Which giving himself. To do. Yeah, when yeah. giving himself a way to just keep trying to lay the game, keep trying to lay the game so I can draw lands, so I can actually put these cards into play that actually do something. Yeah. Now, would you want to block with the Cloud from Raptor? Or would you yeah. say, it, normally I don't like chump blocking, but because the Lothian Troll does have trample, it yeah. might be relevant. Yeah, I mean, you throw it in front of it, you throw it in front of the, the gatekeeper, the two, four, you take three, you go down now four, you've got two, uh, you know, a, a four toughness guy and a three toughness guy there in the Pegasus and the knight, and you just say, uh, I mean, is it time to let this Cloud from Raptor go? Because let's say that Turtle Wall does draw a land, sure. play something to evolve, and it's just a one two. Okay. You know, it's not even going to battle that well in combat, so maybe it's time to hit the escape button on the Cloud from Raptor. All right, so he decides to go to two. Yeah. Might be the right play, might not. We don't know. Follow up, just an Ors. I mean, I, I say it's just an Ors off key rune, but, but it's it's relevant here. A, a creature is pretty good, and as Turtle Wall draws a security blockade. Okay, that's gonna do something. 
So that's gonna actually that's gonna evolve and be a creature here. Yeah. The two two knights. That's not the worst draw in the world for Turtonwald. In this situation, he is again only at two life though. And it's actually pretty good that he didn't block with that Cloudron Raptor. Yeah. Now the Cloudron Raptor could actually do something. Instead of it being an 0-1, it's now a 1-2. Yep. Yeah, so world of a difference right there. Yeah, look at Turtonwall kind of gumming up the board right now. So, you know, Swatkins were attacked with all four of his creatures. Assuming he doesn't have a creature in his hand to discard, you know, Turtonwall maybe puts the Pegasus in front of the other, in front of Swatkins' Pegasus. He puts his 1-4 in front of Swatkins, I don't know, his 2-4, so that doesn't die. He puts 2-2 two -two in front of the Lotlith Troll, and he puts his 1-2 Cloudfin Raptor in front of the 1-4 Orzhov Kirun. No trample damage. He does have to let the knight go, but I mean, it's not. I mean, if he lets the lot let's roll through, he just dies. So. I think Turbo might have just stabilized. Yeah. I mean, maybe th maybe those are his blocks. Maybe those aren't. You know, I'm just looking at him very briefly here. Sure. Maybe you're able to put the four, the one four in front of the lot let's troll. You know, you, you move around your guys a little bit, and you don't take any damage. Yeah. Maybe he did just hit his stabilization point. Okay. And as you see, Swatkins is talking to his, his teammates here. Let's see oh, what Swatkins this has. Is a spell. That's oh, a wow, Shastani's judgment. Just when I thought Turtle Wall might have stabilized. Yeah. All right, so he cannot attack with the key room because he doesn't have mana to activate it. So now, how will Turtle Wall block? Well, taking taking care of that Hazada sna Snare Squad was just a big deal with the Shastani's judgment. As you saw, Swatkins, Gagnon, and Dionato trying to figure out what to target with it. Turtle Wall going to do some blocking here. Put the Cloud from Raptor there. Put the Knight there. Regeneration on the lot the troll. Turtonwall looks like he's ready to pass priority. Yeah, these are great blocks by Turtonwall. Yeah. Uh, okay, oh, so he's moving around. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure if Turtonwall's blocks. All right, yeah, so, okay. so those are his blocks. And so it looks like these are final, but you're not sure if he's come to, come to a decision yet. Maybe oh, no, he wants no, to okay. go here. Yeah, he's still thinking. Yeah, it looks like Swatkins may have been a little bit hasty on the regeneration. Just, yeah. I'm going to regenerate anyway. It's fine. I don't have anything else to do this turn. Okay, so okay. pretty much the same blocks. Yeah. And Knight it's not that bad. The dust. Yeah, so turn one ends the turn at two, but it's with one less guy. Ooh. Finally draws the planes. Draws his fourth land. This is going to be really important. Drew that card emphatically. Yeah. And those blocks were, you know, fine. Owen pretty much got a free roll from the security blocky. Yep. He still has a card around, prevent a damage. Might might be relevant next turn. Let's see what Swatkin just drawn for this turn. I think turn one has a Hussar Patrol. That would be a heck of a play right now. That would be pretty now. good, yeah. So here comes the Orzhov Guildgate. In come everybody. Yet again here from Swatkins. If that's the case, it will evolve the Cloudfin Raptor yes, as well. Yes, it will. I see an eyes in this guy's, and I think it's a Hussar Patrol. Let's see what Owen decides to go with. So here is oh. Hussar Patrol, the 2-4 Flash with Vigilance. He's going to evolve the Cloud from Raptor. It's time for blocking. He's going to block here. He's going to put the Star Patrol in the Lot Patrol. He's going to put the Cloud from Raptor in front of the Pegasus. He's going to take what looks to be one damage. Going down go to down one. down to one. <laughs> Swapkins is going to go up to 29. Lot Patrol is going to get regenerated. All right. <laughs> Staying alive. Is this a Centaur <laughs> Herald by Swatkins? Is that what he drew this turn? It oh, is. Wow. Dark Star and has the mana to activate it. So the Turton Wall's not out of the woods yet here. Yeah. As he draws a card. It is not a land. Oh, I think it's a Wind Drake, though. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. No, it's not actually the worst thing in the world here. So he has Eyes in the Skies. He could also play a Wind Drake and leave open the plane so he's able to use the security blocking yep. to prevent a damage. Hmm. Some, some really interesting lines here. He is hanging on. By a thread right now. Yeah. That's what I would call it. And I think it is. Oh, uh -huh. no. At first, Turnwall thought, you know, I'm going to play the Windrake, but maybe not. We'll uh, we'll see what happens here. Turnwall really has to think about this. Yeah, that's Look. how you see Jensen. You see Duke. Yeah. Jensen advising him. Duke kind of looking on a little bit. Yeah. Huey saying, why don't we try this Try this line? Is it is it is it obvious that the Windrake plus security block in line is correct? Yeah, and it, so, Turnwall makes his play. It is just a win streak, and he does pass the turn back. Yeah, it seems the fact that Reed Duke has kind of been letting Turnwall and Jensen, maybe because they've been there longer, they understand the game, they understand the matchup more. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll see. All right. And Squawkins is activating his or Orzov key rune. Everybody coming in again. We've seen this the past couple of turns here. Let's see what Turnwall's blocks are going to be. He's hit one life. Yeah. All right. So Pegasus this there, here. this there, Clown Fed Raptor there, Activating a damage. Blockade. 
regenerate. Okay. Did he get out of this turn alive too? I think oh so. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right. So now turn one needs to land right here. Oh, he draws, draws an it. Wow. Wow. Oh, Such boy. a clutch draw. So so now he's able to have something like eyes in the skies with security blockade. I also think he might have a nightly valor in his hand, which he he could if it is a nightly valor. It's scary. Could, it's scary could, to play, right? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, he could just start going on the offense. Because he's going to beef up his guy and get a yeah, uh, two two. Yeah, get a two two. It's kind of scary because like you, your nightly valor player, your nightly valor play certainly has some merit, right? Yeah, sure. As you say, he can actually start getting on the offense now, trying to cut down the number of draws have Swagman's has to get out of the situation. The alternative is you know he plays that eyes in the sky and has security blockade available too. Because you know what does he want to have his focus on? How important is the security block right now? Preventing that one damage because it was very important the past two turns. But this nightly valor, the ability to have that on change everything as you see. Jensen and Turtenwald kind of talking about it a little bit here about hey, what do I want to do? So it looks like Turtenwald's reaching. It looks like I think it's a, a nightly, nightly valor. valor. Yeah. All right. On the Concordia Pegasus, there's your night token. Here comes your Hussar Patrol yep. and your Concordia Pegasus. So that's and that's how you card. attack with Vigilance guys. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you know you bring it's... those guys forward. Yeah, so so everybody understands, no confusion. That is an attack for five. Yeah. Ooh, what was that? Looks like Swatkins drew, drew a spell. Was it a Griffin? Yes, is he? He flashed it quick. It, it, it might have been the 2 3 flying Griffin. The thing here, too, Gerard, is that Swatkins just draws a removal spell, the game's over. Sure. But there's nothing Turtle Wall can do about that. He can't beat yeah. a removal spell at any point. So there's no reason to try to All play right. around it. And it is the 2 3 Griffin. All right, so Turtle Wall's going to untap, still alive, draws a card. It's an island. island. Wow. Okay, so this is really good now for him. This is what he wants. He wants to draw out of this mana screw so he can play all the spells in his hand. And he wants to have a security blockade up as well. So now let's look. Swatkins has a 1-3 Pegasus. He has a 2-3 Griffin. Does Owen have any at all? Oh, another wow. Nightly Valor, this time on the Wind Drake. Oh my goodness. So now another 2-2 two, two Vigilant Light's going to come into play. Yeah. And now Turtenwald is really starting to push an advantage. Now he's really getting going here. What a game by Turtenwald. He is trying to turn this this game around. And these attacks are certainly, you know, this attack is fail-proof. What can go wrong? Yeah, exactly. All right, so, so both Flyers are coming in with Vigilance. And I think Swatkins is just going to have to take the 7 damage here. He's going to get in front here. Oh, what, what is, is this? this? Ooh. Ooh, that could go wrong. Oh. Not the end of the world. How many flyers does he have? So he has two flying yes. blockers. He has one, two, three, four, five blockers total versus one, two, three, four, five, six. six. Yeah, but he has the security blockade. Okay, yep. So that's why it was so important for him to draw Ooh. an island that turn or, or a planes. So does Watkins brick off? Oh, Ooh, very go long, very long legs. Pass turn back. All right. see, what, see what Turtenwald can draw this turn. We do know about that eyes in the skies. He draws Soul Sworn Spirit to one to tame. Yeah, so I think Turtenwald right now, he just wants to attack with his Pegasus and he wants to pass the turn. What do you think about that? Boy, oh boy. At end of turn, he could either eyes in the skies or if Swatkin wants to attack, he could eyes in the skies and he could populate one of his knights. Yep. So, and for example, if Swatkins doesn't attack, Turner Walker just say, okay, I'll just do an inspiration. Yeah, that's true, because he's been holding on inspiration for a long time. And I think the other card in Owen's hand, I'm not positive here. And, and okay, I, I'm definitely wrong. There's, there's no dramatic rescue there. I thought there might be a chance, you know, but I, I believe there's no the, dramatic uh, rescue. The Archon? The yeah, the, yeah. yeah, the Archon and Tremula yes. is what's in his hand right now. Yeah. He's a little ways away from that. I mean, you can say that he's, set, he's only one land away, but I think he wants to play that with an additional land. So that he can have security blockade up. Maybe. It depends. Maybe. It depends. If he does go eyes in the skies this turn, that's two extra guys. So he mm -hmm. probably doesn't need the security blockade. So it's close. All right. Let's see what Watkins draws. This is a classic game of, I think I'm going to win. And all of a sudden, it's slipping away. Yep. And it's like, oh man, what went these, wrong this game? How can I not feel one more damage? These are my favorite limited yeah. games because Turnwall has been at one life and the pressure has been on him to not make a single error. Yeah. And at the same time, give himself the opportunity to draw lands to get out of this while fading draw steps from Swatkins. Yeah. These are my favorite limited games here. And now you see all three players from the Swatkins, Gagnon, and Diodonato side talking things through. What am I supposed to do this turn? Because to me, that, that, that smite was huge. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was good. You know, it, I don't think it was insane, yeah. but let's see. Deeds not a reach. Or excuse me, Swatkins reaching. Doesn't look like he has anything. Eyes in the sky here from Turtenwald. All right, I'm pretty sure he's going to populate 
one of the knights. It seems like that would make the most sense. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So there's your knight token. There's a there's bird. There's your bird token. All right. So turn wall will untap. He will draw for his turn just in a second. Let's so another see. Land. Is it a land? It Ooh. is not. It's an agoraphobia. That's that's pretty good. So let's see. What are our best targets over there for swap inside for agoraphobia? Is it just straight up the Algari long legs? Maybe, but 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 why decide now? Why not? Inspiration first. Okay. Dig deeper. As long as you draw a land, you could play your spell and have the blockade open like like you wanted, Cedric. But as you said, as long as you draw a land. As long as you draw a land. Yeah. But dangerous. If not, you could reevaluate. I mean Eternal Wall now has seven blockers. How do you tap for the inspiration? You leave open island. Leave an island? Okay. Yeah. Leave them an island and uh blockade. Let's see if Turn Wall takes the, the line I suggest. Bit of a risk. Scary line there. Yeah, I mean, at one life, and anything you do is scary. Yeah, that's, you know, that's it's true. Like, <laughs> you're, you're living on borrowed time, it feels like. Definitely right about that. So let's see what Turnal wants to do. As you see, 40 minutes has elapsed so far. All so right. we does start with inspiration. Yep, let's see. Hit one, one, two, Frostburn, Frostburn Weird, weird and, and an island. island. Okay. Wow. Okay. He could even just play Frostburn mm -hmm. Weird here. What do you think about that? As opposed to the Agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is basically a removal spell right now where Frostburn Weird is just another blocker. Yeah. It's cool. See the way. All he's right. He's going to go Frostburn Weird. He's going to evolve the Griff. That's Griff. awesome. Yeah, the, the, uh, the Cloud from the Raptor. Excuse yeah. me. So that's a big deal. Let's see what Swatkin draws now. Swatkins has another Gilgate in his hand. Did he draw another land? I'm not sure. I know he has at least one land in his hand. You see him. And you see the way he's thumbing his cards right now? Because he's yeah. thumbing his cards in such a way that it was looked like he was ready to put a land and play yeah. tapped, and then he did. All right, so oh, this there it is. Whoa. Seven? Oh, wow. Tessa? Jeez. What is Turtle Wall going to do about that? <laughs> well, he has the answer in his hand. What yeah. does he have? What did I miss? The, the aquaphobia. Well, I mean, agoraphobia, sure. I mean, that's... That takes care of Tessa from killing him, yes. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take care of the rest of the text on Tessa. Sure. On Tessa. And, and that's the big deal. How's, how's Turtle Wall going to deal damage now? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's, it, it's that's tough. the big thing. We'll bring, yeah, we'll bring Tessa up on for you. This, you know, this is the guilt champion of the Orzhov Vigilance Protection from Creatures. So Turtle Wall having agoraphobia there was key. But now you look at this. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, destroy that creature. And you get a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying into play. So Turtle Wall was kind of pressing his advantage coming back. Yeah. As we saw with those Nightly Valors and the Flyers. Oh, boy. And, and other thing, Gerard, is he's blue-white. I know he is. Maybe he has to set, it up, set up a big turn and just, just alpha attack. That, that's definitely a, uh, a possibility. So let's see what Swatkins is going to do. What do you think Swatkins wants to draw here? What do you think? I'm not too sure. He's got a lot of lands. He has two, four, six, eight. So Owen does have some powerful rares in his deck. He does. So Owen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. So the board is completely clogged up. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> there is the uh, gatekeeper, and that will take out one of Owen Turnerwall's knights. So as you can see, Swatkins does a little math. He starts counting the creatures. Why not, right? So Turnerwall, he has some rares, right, Cedric? Yeah, what? I mean, we, 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 know he he has, we know he has an Aetherling, which okay. doesn't look great here, oddly enough. This is going to tap a bunch of mana. We know he has Archon of the Tremulative, which looks like he's tapping mana for it. Now he's tapping seven. There's your Archon. Sure. There's your Evolve. We're what going to see a double have? detain. But the big card that he has right now that might actually be able to win him this game is Labyrinth of, of the Tenth. Yes, so he could play this. Yep. Okay, maybe we could pull that up on screen. Yeah. All right, it has protection from red. Yeah, we don't Labyrinth care. of the Tenth. Yeah, it has protection from red. We, we don't, really don't care, care about, about that. that. No, yeah. but what do we care about? We care about the fact that it detains every creature that costs four or less. Four or less. Yeah. All right, yeah. so he, he could kind of use this as a falter. Yep effect and just attack because Watkins is only at 15 life yep. and Turtle Wall has way more than 15 damage on the table yeah. so we'll uh, 
We'll see how things play the, out the here. Other thing that's key here too, Gerard. Detain each non-land permanent. So yes. he's going to detain the key rune. The key rune. Yeah. Which might be very important if that's the plan that he's trying to set up here. That's definitely the plan. Yeah. You know, because Turtlewall knows his deck, William Jensen knows his deck, and they're thinking ahead. So let's see if this is how the game is going to end. You know what Swatkins is thinking? What is he thinking? How am I going to deal point of damage? Yeah. I need to deal <laughs> one point of damage right one now. One damage. You know, he, he's probably hoping for something like a toil and trouble. That would be pretty nice. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Like, All right, I'll pretty much sign and blood you. Yep. Draw two cards, you lose two life, I win. So I, I don't know if Swatkins has yeah, it in I his deck. Take Let's take a look at Let's take a look at his see. outs right now. Yeah, I want to see what is he trying to draw to to win this game because you know the funny thing here too is that a uh, that black gatekeeper that would have been for the win a long time ago. Oh yes, it would have. Blocker, but that showed up to the party a little bit late here. He's going to count in his deck and see how many cards are left right now. Who's going to get deck first? You know what? Maybe Turtle Wall has less cards, and Turtle Wall's like, oh, I have less cards. Maybe he could play it like, oh, I'm going to get deck. He could turn to William Jensen and say, oh, I have less cards. I'm going to get deck, and then surprise him, surprise him with his legendary creature that will detain yeah. everything on Swatkin's yeah. side. Try to give away some free information, yeah. but it's not free information at all. Exactly. You know, we see, I mean, I'm taking a look at the deck list here. You know, there, it's crazy to think about the draws that Swatkin's had available. During that point where Turtle Wall was barely holding on, he had access to two unflinching courage. Oh, wow. They could have drawn. That right now, not so much. Not so much. You know, we take a look over here, Kingpin's Pet. Okay. With an extort trigger. And that'll get the job done. I'm looking for more extort cards right now. Not very many in the list here. Sure. All right, so Turner Wall is going to uh, tap some lands here. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Holy Mantle. Oh, wow. Wow. One, two, three. Is that five islands he has? Is this lethal right now? You see him counting the fly. Oh, my goodness. It is. Holy Mantle. He boarded in the Holy Mantle. Because I remember they were talking about, hey, should we main deck it? Should we not main deck it? And they said, no, just leave it in your board. This is game two. He put it in Holy Mantle, and I believe that's game. Four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Swatkin sitting there with an avenging Five, arrow. Five, nine. Yeah. What can he do? Turn around saying, yeah, I can just pump the uh, Frost One Weird, and that'll be game. Oh, hey, hey, wow. wow. Wow, what a sick game. Unbelievable win there. Owen Turtenwald, William Jensen, That's and awesome. Reed Duke are going to the finals. Yeah. Woo-wee. Wow. The only thing that could have got more exciting if that was game three. Yeah. <laughs>